Hello everybody. Welcome to this webinar called the Digital Assembly Analysis Story, which is part two in our series about the DAA Toolkit from Origin International. The first part in this series showed us assembling two parts together in a very 2D fashion. We're extending that capabilities today and showing you some of the new tools available in this product. Who DAA is for? It's really designed for production engineers and their suppliers in QA. So as you have suppliers, um, you're verifying multiple suppliers, you're shipping parts to people, specifically in a pre-production environment, that's who it's for. Where DAA fits, just like I said, pre-production R&D of higher variable processes, prog die and or injection molded weldments, precision mean machine par uh, cast parts, or in the new world of additive manufacturing or mixed materials. So if you've got uh, mixed variable manufacturing process parts on your assemblies, great application for this. Why DAA is important? In pre-production R&D, time is money. We all know that uh, projects can run over. We have unexpected manufacturing uh, issues, delays, learning new things about a process or how a material fits into a, a variable. Uh, the material variable fits into things and things change unexpectedly. DAA gives you time to solve assembly problems. There's nothing else like getting your time back. And um, Jeff from Origin and I, we always joke that about the football analogy of wouldn't you like to have instead of two minutes on the clock to start a touchdown, maybe the whole quarter. Right? That's what we're giving you is more time because we're analyzing and showing you defects much earlier in the process. What DAA is and what it does. It's a tool for both metrology, data visualization, and simulating corrective actions. DAA processes stackups of child part measurements to uncover assembly deviations. It's very wordy, but what it really means is I can see how the parts will look individually but I can also see how they will look as assembled. There's a lot of variables to that, uh, different mating features. Um, we can't simulate clamping pressures or bolt pressures or things like that, but how will the deviations of part one actually be aligned or look like when they're, look, when they're mated to the actual features of part two? And we'll go through a couple of scenarios like that. Digital assembly analysis. When we're going to make an assembly of four parts, we often think of them as we're going to send these out, whether it's internal or external, we'll have them manufactured. There's four different components. We Each one has a drawing, each one has a CAD file, and we wait for uh, to get a CMM report or a color map from scan data that shows us if the parts are good or bad and um, where they all fit in. And um, this has been around for years. This isn't anything new. And um, all of those parts are, are, are reports are typically sent, you know, in, in modern times digitally um, through email or a server like that uh, to the incoming inspection department. They'll read those reports, see where deviations are. And depending on your process, your volume and, and where you're at, there's a lot of times you still receive the parts because you want to mock up an assembly. And that's what we're, what we're, what we're dealing with today, which we're illustrating how you can use this data in particular scan data without waiting for the parts to be shipped without waiting for them to be assembled and building jigs and fixtures and what have you and let's see what it looks like in uh, assembled and optimized conditions another thing that we've done in the past with historical manufacturing is to take component one and build up jigs and fixtures um, that mimic the datum structure of its mating part so we make sure it's going to fit on the fixture, we're going to make sure it fits on the simulated datums and what have you, and use optical um, green and white visual gauges to see if it, if it fits a profile or a CMM report, uh, et cetera, et cetera, to simulate the mating datums. It's been around for years. We don't have to do that step. And again, we, we sorry, it, you know, we're just showing um, where that market is. Um, the other obvious thing is you can ship the parts around. You can actually, you know, ship the four components um, in this example and send them to the manufacturer, whoever's going to be assembling them. 
They can assemble them, check them individually, and inspect them as an assembly. And um, that's obviously a valuable process in itself as you uh, write your work procedures and your, and your uh, internal documents on how things can, need to be assembled. And we don't know all that kind of comes in phase two once you verify if they're even going to assemble together. And what we're doing is trying to compress that time and your confidence in the quality of your parts. So again, scan when things are mechanically assembled. What we're showing you today and, and what the DAA toolkit is allowing you to do is simulate that um, assembled condition of all the parts, but not just assemble. We're going to scan them. So we're going to have the CAD model of each. We'll have the scan data of each. We'll align them each and stack them all up on top of each other to their actual mating features. And that's a very important variable. So again, we're going to assemble it as scanned. The neat thing is that this solution can be brought into various other places in, in the timeline that you can replace some of your current policies and procedures, methodologies, and get uh, those solutions and things mapped out early. So let's jump into it. Um, this is the part, and this is an extension of the part that we used in the first webinar. And um, the part we're gonna, we're gonna, we call this part four or the yellow part, just cause the other parts have different colors. But you can see that <clears throat> when it's assembled together, we have a problem. And um, this isn't a well-designed part. That's not the point that we're, we're getting across today. The point is we can stack all the scan data on top of each other. So the part in one condition may be best fit to itself. Another condition could be best fit to the datums. And you can see there's not a lot of change between these two. But what we'll show you is when we actually assemble this um, onto the pink part, which is we've got to factor in this post here, the mating condition of this um, webbed face feature here. It's on a 45 degree angle. We've got plane circles and cylinders and interrogating the um, functional mating a geometry of each part in order to um, to accomplish that. So um, the reality, you don't have to take into account the, you, sorry, the reality, you have to take into account the form, the orientation, the location of the mating part. And it's no longer an ind individual evaluation. So let's show you how. So that's the end of my, the uh, PowerPoint portion of this. I'm just gonna to um, close that down. And here we are in uh, Checkmate for SolidWorks and um, gonna use a couple of different tools in the um, DAA toolkit. I'm sorry, I did forget a couple slides there. I need, need to go back to that. Um, one of the things we wanted to talk about were the four different pieces. Um, the first one is managing nominal frameworks, a very important variable, which is um, we typically think of this as writing a CMM program or putting MBD on a model. A nominal framework is just what you want inspected to verify if the part's good or bad, verify the mating conditions. The second piece is uh, process scan data against multiple datum structures. You know, it's easy when you've got datum A, B, and C on a part, but what about when a, another part mounts to the DEF of that part? It's where GD and T doesn't get exponential exponentially harder it just means you have to have really good organization tools um, you need to have visualization tools to color and organize individual stl files it may, it's just a little bit of housekeeping but you need some really good tools along the way in order to um, make sure you, you can manage you know if you go from four to eight to ten parts you've got to have a, a process a workflow in place to do that and uh, the DAA toolkit has some really cool things in it that we're going to show you. And then the last piece is we need to stack them all together. Um, we kind of briefly spoke about this in webinar number one, but we're going to show you that um, very basic operation today in the workflow. So if we lay all them out um, in a linear path or in a workflow, we're going to um, manage our nominal frameworks, process some scan data, against the datums, we'll organize some things and then we'll stack the, the two parts together. And we're only gonna be dealing with stacking one part three-dimensionally onto another three-dimensional mating. So again, um, could the, the input variables managing nominal frameworks were our, our SolidWorks model-based definition. We can, that allows us to import and export segments between files. 
So if you've got four individual pieces with model-based definitions on each file, you simply go through that process and then export the, um, the nominal framework and import it in, into one assembly. Um, we're going to be using Soffit Solver for geometry-based selection sets, um, an amazing feature. And we're going to organize the STLs and we're going to transform them from the from the global space where they wherever they were measured and um, bring them onto the part and also introduce a new command called CM clip mesh or clip basically allow you to section the mesh. Uh, we showed you a, a brief glimpse of that uh, in the last webinar and um, it's got some new features about it already. And then introducing stack fits. This is um, a very important variable. It's been around in the Soffit Solver product for a long time, um, has many different uses. We're going to use that uh, technology today to put these parts together. So, sorry, now it's officially the end of my presentation. Let's let's jump back into this. So here we are in Checkmate for SolidWorks, and um, you can see I've got three STL files loaded. So um, at the end of the first webinar, we, we kind of um, had the black part and the pink part. There's a much simpler version of the pink part then, and we've since kind of grown it. And these were part three parts, four in total, but through these three parts that are visible were all um, all from additive manufacturing. They're all 3D printed, uh, I believe, on a combination of a Mark Forged and an Ultimaker printers. Um, and we did that on purpose, and we'll, we'll talk about that um, a little bit later. First thing I'm going to do show you again some visibility controls. Um, all, everything we do in Checkmate is very well organized and easy to hide and not hide things. So if I don't want to see these uh, parts anymore, I just simply um, hide the levels. And if I want just standard SolidWorks things as I can hide and unhide um, the CAD model or associated uh, part. I am in the SLD kind of um, part space, not assembly mode of SolidWorks. Um, because we're even though these are four individual parts, we're treating them, uh, we're not treating them as like a mated assembly in SolidWorks. Um, just the difference between uh, working with nominal frameworks and Checkmate versus uh, assemblies and designing assemblies in um, the SolidWorks portfolio products. So I don't need the pink, and I'm just going to hide that again. I just wanted to show that. But here we are with the CAD model, and um, just standard kind of 3D environment. And there's just a very simple workflow that we're going to go through. So we're going to load in the associated um, scan data for this part. We're going to do a color map. We're going to extract the nominals. We're going to do some fits. And then we are literally going to show you how the SF stack will fit that on into the actual location of the other part. So let's go ahead and load in the scan data on this at the individual part level. Just going to go to my defaults and I want to make sure I've got it selected to freeform alignment. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK and we're going to say go ahead and load in the scan data. And um, it'll just take a second to do this. There we go. We want to load in the yellow part. And what Checkmate is doing is there it just loaded in um, and best fit the um, STL file. It's not, it, and it computed what, what's called a faceted mesh, and it's computed that and, and obviously displayed uh, a color coded um, chromatic kind of m m picture on the model. And again, I'm just going to crank down the uh, kind of profile, general profile tolerance on that, just so you can see some color and show that it's pretty red. You know, red is out of tolerance high, blue is out of tolerance low. Uh, based on that 250.25 millimeter uh, tolerance band that we put on the color map. Just a very basic step we have to do is um, you'll notice on the CMM programming tab, we don't have a program for the yellow part. And a uh, very simple exercise to go in, just, just as I mentioned, we're going to go and import that program, which is called Checkmate Import. I'm going to import the yellow part. So this would have come from its own. Um, program, its own SOLIDWORKS MBD um, database. We would have processed that with the auto MBD command and then just simply exported it and now I've imported it into this session. A very, very important uh, aspect of this is that you will notice in this segment, just like the program where it came from, 
we have datum A, datum B, datum C, datum D, E, F. We also have that for all of the other parts. So the underlying engine um, for Checkmate for SolidWorks does allow you to have multiple datums, multiple mixed label types, and it manages all of that under the hood for you. One of the uh, interesting things is this green and red light scenario. And when I process um, all of the, I want, I want to go and analyze the point cloud for all of these um, things that were in the program or, or objects or features or um, plane, circles, line, points. And it's just a very simple operation. I'm going to say, go ahead and uh, load in the CMM data um, or load results from the color map. Call it part number four, some pretty easy questions. And one of the things that I really like is this counter that shows that you've, you know, you've got to have at least a number one in this column. And what that represents is, hey, for that feature, I, was six, I successfully, successfully evaluated it. So it just gives you a very quick uh, visual indicator to show you that for each of those features, um, it successfully evaluated it. And uh, you'll be able to continue on with that kind of evaluation. So now we've got the um, the uh, all the data loaded, all the data computed. I, I don't really need to see the program anymore. I'm just going to uh, hide it and put it in the background, and um, we can continue. So now I'm going to switch over to the, the uh, root cause browser because the color map that's on the screen right now, when it was brought in, it was simply best fit on the model which is not what we want at all. Uh, I'm just going to delete these groups that are were, were lying around before. Um, we don't want that. We don't want best fit. We need it to be aligned to the individual datums on this part. There's a couple ways to do that. There's two or three ways to do that. I'm just going to pick one where I'm going to show all the features available. And you'll notice that in the background, because I do have the brown, the black, and the pink part processed right now, I'm just going to scroll to the bottom of the list where my yellow features are. I'm going to take my A, B, and C datums. I'm going to put them in that a group. I just drag them over to the group. I'm going to fit that. You know, you can name the group however you need. I'll just call this one. You know, yellow, yellow datums. F stands for a fit or a line. Go ahead and fit it up, and we'll just call this one yellow A, B, C. And you've essentially that quickly gone and aligned it. And you, you, there was a subtle change in the color map if I kind of cycle back and forth between them. So between as measured, yellow, you know, as measured and yellow, you're just kind of flipping between those coordinate systems. And the difference with this now, um, if I go back to yellow, um, is that uh, here it is aligned. Now I'm going to do uh, two other things here before we move into the um, stacking of this onto the pink part. Uh, now that I've got it aligned, I'm going to do I'm going to bring in the actual STL file of the um, scan data, and, and just so we can use that as a visual reference, and it's kind of neat. Go back to my point cloud metrology tab. I'm going to say load STL, and I'm going to load in the uh, part four yellow STL file. And you'll notice that it's off in space and um, it's no trick or anything like this. It's when this part was measured on whatever system it came from, it has that camera or lasers coordinate system. So it's literally just off in a random coordinate system out in space. And we've got some really cool tools underneath the hood. And I'm just gonna make it hot, hot as a way of um, creating a selection set, meaning I want to be processing all that data. And I'm just going to execute a command here called tra uh, CM trans or allow the data to be transformed. I'm going to say load it from that current, um, the previous color map operation, but only apply it to the hot data. And there you can see it's, it's automatically put it on the part. And then I'm going to do that one more time, CM trans again, and I'm going to say load it from a fit. This time load it from ABC. I go ahead, go to die to body, and you'll see it just kind of move a little bit, um, but that's not really important right now. I'm just going to come in and do one last thing, which is change the color. And I just do this as, this as a sanity check and say, I know I'm working with the yellow part, so instead of it being gray, I um, just want to be 
able to uh, again I can hide the hide the cat um, or the color map that was there and just be looking at the uh, scan data as well so again if we um, just unhide the other ones right now this is kind of again with the yellow part now yellow STL file now just on the yellow in the best position for the yellow ABC datums so it's kind of kind of a very basic approach to it but it, it would work you know we could do an evaluation but that's really not what we're showing today we're going to take this one one step up for a little bit further so i'm going to go back and uh, hide the other ones i don't need them and um, we don't really need our program anymore so i'm just going to turn those off as well just to make sure we don't mess anything up and we're going to go back um, i don't need to see the pink part either i forgot to double click on that there we go so we're left with um, just the uh, CAD on the yellow part. And we're now gonna go back to the root cause browser. I'm gonna go back to kind of as measured. And I'm, I'm gonna actually gonna remove these groups that again um, were there. And I'm gonna start analyzing them a in, in a little bit of a different way. So um, before we, we go into this SF stack, we just need to make sure everything's updated and um, there's a there's a just a simple command you can pull it from the menus it's called um, update so I'm just gonna type it in and I'm gonna say update and I want to update a particular group I want it based on the yellow ABC and hit raw just a couple of very basic options and said based on the yellow and what we just did there is said hey I um, brought in a file I originally had it best fit and from this base point on going forward I want my new zero to be where the scan data is aligned to datum a B and C so it's it's kind of just a little check mark to say everything's been zeroed out it, it's stored where everything is and it basically a new starting point for this part so I'm gonna go and create two more groups in this in root cause browser which is really you know soft solver and using these fitting tools to um, help us out. So let's uh, go do this. I'm going to go and pick two groups of features, not the datums on part A or the datums on, on B, are on the pink part. They could essentially be datums, there's nothing wrong with them. I just know the features um, through looking at the programming entities. So if I, you know, I'll just show you how I know this. If I unhide the program for a second, um, the yellow one, which is here, if I unhide it, you know, if I put my cursor over top of a feature like this, it, it just shows me it's the yellow, it's in the yellow segment, it's called yellow B. I might come into this side of the part here, and this is called yellow six. You know, it, it's telling me if I hold my cursor over, oh, that's datum D. So I kind of need to know what features on the pink part match up with the features on the yellow part and vice versa so we kind of need what are those things that mate together is it datum a is it datum a on both parts is it b on parts and when you've got multiple parts with multiple mating conditions you just kind of have to know what mates with what and we often do that with datums um, not and that may be available in the print it may be the way you write your CMM program there's a lot of variables into that uh, I'm just gonna go and show you one way that I do this which is I, I pull up the list again and I knew I'm gonna go and go back into the pink part and I'm gonna pick the pink datum D features which is datum D and the two um, E and F so they must be how not must be i know they are the w datums on the pink part that mount to these datums on this part so i'm essentially going to bring these over into the browser and we'll call this one uh pink part um dowels i'm just calling it dowels because it's a way an easy way to think of that's how you're going to dowel or zero the part and um, I'm going to do the same with the yellow. I know that it's aligned through the actual datum D face. These are the features that are going to mate with the pink part. So I'm going to pick the datum uh, D features. I know that datum B is also important and yell six. Again, I'm not arbitrarily just picking features. These are features of all the things that I need it to, to factor in 
when we're assembling this part. And again, I'll call this one yellow dowels. And again, we're, we're kind of done. So we've got two groups assigned and um, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna go and fit those on their own. So let's go fit this. And I'm gonna go and say, okay, let's go align it and hit fit. Again, let's use a, a naming strategy. Pink dowel location or pink dowel should be good enough. We hit okay. Now, I don't have my color maps visible, but and it's not important. What you're really looking for is to make sure everything came in tolerance. The numbers got really quite small. It created a valid alignment through those parts. Let's go do another one. So now we're gonna just enable this other group in the root cause browser. And this time we're gonna fit again. And this time we're gonna call it yellow dowels. All right. And again, we've got two conditions. Um, it's actually showing you how the pink is matched up with the yellow, but we'll, we'll, we've just essentially realigned them created two new alignments of how each part is going to work in the um, against each other or with each other. And uh, now we just need to use the, the SF stack toolkit to actually put the yellow onto the pink. These are th two 3D fits, by the way, that um, if we if you wanted to, we can we could unhide these. But I can assure you that let's just show you that um, you know, we're talking about um, a, sur a couple of surface points that represent a plane. Um, oh, I have a feature in there I didn't want. Um, let me go back and do that again. I for I, there we go. I just realized something was there that I didn't want to be. Let's go back to Pink Doll. And we don't want the... <laughs> that was a mistake. I good thing I caught it. But it just shows you the flexibility. I'm going to just uh, remove that from the group thought I had too many, but I, I had a, an, a feature from another part in there accidentally. So I just have to do that and I'll just say refit, meaning realign it. And um, that's great. So it actually said now, now that without that in there, you can see that in this condition, it wasn't the best. I, didn't, I don't need to do anything again with the yellow. We're all good. Just cleaned up that little bit of a problem. So you're essentially just picking features, picking the features. You're not randomly doing, you're, you're picking the features that will mate together. Um, you know, you can create whisker diagrams. I'll, I'll just go show this as an example here. Um, output whiskers point at nominal based on a particular group. So I'm going to say based on my yellow dowels, I want to sure that whisker diagram, just the yellow part. And again, you can see, um, how we've aligned that right now. And, um, you know, the features on here that have been aligned. So the yellow, the yellow, it's a, it's a pretty good part um, based on the on the current tolerances that are on it. So just there's some very simple ways to report the individual part deviations. Um, and let's just continue on with the process. So I'll just hide that. And now we get to do the um, stacking, which is pretty easy. I'm just gonna say um, CM SF stack and it's also in the menus and the toolbars i just like to type it in because it's easy and i'm going to call this one yellow to pink we're moving the yellow part and based in its current transformation onto the pink part and where its pink datums are so it's basically saying select the fit to stack on another so i'm going to say take the yellow dowels and stack it onto the pink dowels tells me my my transform and and what it's done and i go ahead and hit save and um let's see the results the best way to see the results let's bring back the uh um stl file to begin with and i'm going to make it hot so i'm going to just say hot plus group and i'm going to go back into my uh, CM transformation, which is CM trans. And I'm going to say, take the hot data, load it from a fit. And I'm going to say yellow to pink, which is my transform. Go ahead and move it. Now you can see it, it just moved it a little bit, right? It moved it a little bit. And again, we can go back and say hot minus all and unhide everything. 
And what you can see is that based on the current quality or deviations across the yellow part, how it, it's having to lift off this bottom surface, but still factoring in that this is a cylinder and, and the amount of uh, tolerance available it can move that around in, in order to make sure that the pink and the yellow actually mount up the way they would as if they were assembled. You're not really caring about um, their nominals anymore. It's where do these things actually fit together. And um, again, one of the cool commands that I really enjoy using uh, on these types of projects is something called CM uh, Clip Mesh. So you can type it in or pick it from the menu. Sometimes it's a little faster just on your, on your own preferences. And if I say I want to clip it and I want to look in the Z axis, I can just start to, uh, oops, I picked the wrong one. I wanted Y axis. You can see that you're able to um, cycle through and I just turn off the CAD model of the yellow part and how you're able to uh, walk through the part. I'm gonna change this to plus Y, there we go. And um, you can actually section the part uh, at a specific value or use your mouse at, at a certain point. And, it, and just like we showed you in the first um, example, uh, you can hit highlight edges, we can do that. You can capture it as a group. Um, or let's just do a fun one, let's leave it in Z. And um, I'm gonna go minus Z, bring it back. And let's just take, a, again, you can do, you the, do this from a 2D or a 3D point of view. Let's do one right about there, capture as a group. Okay, and if I, now just turn off all of the individual meshes. We can actually see how, if I look down my, my Z axis. One more time. And fit, there we go. Again, you can see that it's on a bit of an angle and how far it's actually lifted off the um, brown part surface just to uh, accommodate that mating on the pink part. So there's some really neat tools in there that um, allow us to look at this from a 3D alignment point of view and a 2D diagnostic point of view, a 2D reporting point of view, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm, I'm gonna do uh, one last thing, which is um, we can then actually analyze the whole thing as a color map. And you can do this a couple of different ways. I'm gonna go back and turn off that CM clip mesh. Just turn it all off. And I'll bring back the CAD models. Okay, and um, I will actually uh, hide these meshes right now. There we go, and there's the surfaces visible. Go back to my point uh, metrology tab. I'm gonna load in, da reload data now because it's already aligned. Let's go ahead and uh, load the point cloud data. And this will just take about uh, 40 to 50 seconds. Assembly merged. And this will show the last part of the process, which will be now that we've got everything aligned, um, what the uh, complete part uh, looks like. So I can see that I made one small mistake there. I'm gonna go ahead and delete the color map. I need to go ahead and let's just try that again. So load point cloud from color map and uh, I forgot that I have the individual part there loaded. So it's just gonna go through now and look at all of the um, facet faces and the um, edges and bring everything in. So obviously with four parts being reloaded all at once, it's just gonna take a minute. And this is a really good, um, we'll just go back to that picture that we showed you originally in the PowerPoint that will, um, <clears throat> There we go, so I'll just pick you.
And we're almost done. So once it's done here, we'll be able to um, just kind of verify everything that we've seen. So I hope, uh, we'll just stay on line here for a second. And there it is. So again, once we adjust the color map down to the uh, 250, just to show the deviations, you're able to verify, um, you know, how bad. I mean, I probably didn't need to go that low, but um, yeah, it's really cool. And you can see how you can use this tool to simulate um, real con it's, it, it is simulating because the parts are never haven't been assembled yet but um, get to this point and pro proactively look for these types of problems and be able to solve them before you even know they exist and stop wasting time shipping parts around even though you'll eventually have to do that for for mechanical and uh, prove out and fixture reasons but this is a fantastic tool to save you time in those early days of knowing if your supplier's parts or your own engineered parts are going to work together. I hope this has been informative. Thank you very much for your time, and we look forward to seeing you in the next webinar.